latest in tech and accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Mark Aflalo. Welcome back. So it is the most wonderful time of the year. Yes, that's right, folks. It's time to give out some of our holiday tech gift ideas for those people in your life that you care for. Maybe even that you don't care for, as Mark seems to want to remind us this week. Um, now, who doesn't love a gift guide, especially when we're talking tech, right? And Sean Priest, host of the video podcast, Sean of the Shed, co-host of Double Tap with me, of course, joins us to help us through all this. Hi, Sean. Hello, Stephen. Good to be here. So, Mark, let's uh, kick in. How, how, how are we going to divide this up between the three of us? How are we going to do this? Well, I mean, let, let's let's start by talking about some of those people in your life that you have to buy gifts for. You know, it's like the wow. Secret Santas at the office. You pull a name, and you're like, oh, great. What am I going to buy this person? I don't even know who they are. Maybe you don't like them. Maybe you love them. But you don't want to spend too much money. So what I'm saying here is lower cost items. I think that's probably a good place to start, shall we? Wow. I uh, I just, I don't know what to think. I'm going to be very, if I get a gift from you this year, Mark, I'm going to be uh, considering <laughs> that gift, looking at it very closely to see which list it comes off of. Uh, okay, well, I'll start off, right, because uh, I've sure. got one for you. For the book lovers out there, there's lots of us who enjoy a book, and lots of people at this time of year often buy book tokens or, you know, gift cards for bookstores. But there are a lot of us out there who might enjoy an audio book, especially the blind people amongst us, especially those who drive to work, who have a busy commute, they want to listen to a book on the way, relax their way through perhaps a true crime story. Uh, so Audible subscription gift cards would be my first one. Now, you can do this in two ways. Uh, you can either pay $119 Canadian for the year, or if you want to cheap out, you can just give them six months worth of books. That comes in at $85. That's not a bad price for a year. I mean, a year at 119 yeah. versus 85 for six months. My daughter would love this. She loves audiobooks. She actually falls asleep to them at night. She plugs them into her iPad, puts on her pods, and listens to audiobooks at night. I, I, don't ask questions about that. I don't know where that started, but she loves them. Yeah, nothing wrong with, uh, nothing wrong with an audiobook. Uh, Sean, what about you? What would be uh, on your list? Oh, what's always on my list are the Apple AirTags, $115 for four. They're a bargain. And more than that, I'm forever mislaying things, keys, bags, kids, whatever it may be. You can attach AirTags to any of these. And when you lose them, simply pick up your smartphone and you can find them again. It's magic. You know, my I actually put these in our, our vehicles now, too. It helps us find uh, the car when we've parked it somewhere. Uh, but also, I've mm -hmm. actually heard stories of people using them to track a car when it was stolen, believe it or not. All you need is a thief with an iPhone, and you're set. <laughs> uh, well, this might sound like a good idea, uh, although I thought it was a good idea at the time. I actually considered putting one in the back seat of a bus uh, so that I knew when the bus was coming towards me. Uh, then I realized there was already GPS on the bus and you could just find out through an app. So, you know, I could have probably got into a lot of trouble doing that and uh, I don't advise it. Is there only one bus in Glasgow, Scotland? There, there literally is one bus, yes. There's one single bus and uh, it never seems to be on time. Okay, uh, I'll move on to the next one. The Fitbit Inspire uh, Health and Fitness Tracker, only $88 uh, for health nuts out there. Uh, I, you all know a health nut who just loves tracking everything. And, and the ones who don't have the Apple Watch, you know, you want to look at their wrist and say, okay, what do they have? Do they, or do they have something that they, that they use? This is a perfect device for tracking, obviously, your heart rate, your steps. And, of course, it's a good watch at the same time. And at $88, like, this is not, you know, buy big smart watch for somebody. It's a, it's a great bargain price. Yeah, for maybe that secret Santa or someone that you, you kind of like in your life. Let's go Again, with it, you're obsessed. This, this is really not sounding good. Uh, this is people you don't like. I need to have words with you about this in uh, the show. I, who are these people in your life that have upset you this way, Mark? We need to talk about this. I told you, uh, okay, go on look, social media and we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's where I'm heading after the show. Um, okay, so, and quick mention to Fitbit, of course, now on the Pixel Watch 2, uh, which is also more accessible. That way, uh, if you're blind, for example, you could uh, get more benefit out of that. So that's an alternative there. Uh, Sean, I know you love your Amazon Echoes. Any uh, thoughts on a particular device you might recommend? Yes, all of them. They are all great. But uh, specifically, <laughs> I'm going to say the Amazon Echo Pop at $54.99. It's an absolute bargain. And whether you're you know, new to smart speakers or you want to start your smart home, it's just a really good place to start. It's a, a really great speaker. You can't go wrong with an Amazon Echo speaker. And I've got to say, the Pop, 
I just got a couple of them, actually. I say a couple because they were doing a, a deal at Black Friday where you would buy two and you got a free smart plug. And it actually worked out cheaper than buying one Echo Pop. It was ridiculous oh, really? during the... Yeah, yeah. It was like during Black Friday, the sales were, were just, uh, wow, incredible. Um, now, speaking of sales, this is one I wanted to throw in here. I'm having a great time here, guys. I hope we're not in a rush for time because I'm, I'm here. No, no, Stephen, we have like three, four hours here. Don't worry about it. Take your time. Excellent. That's brilliant because I have got so many things. Uh, so this one, actually, you know, I'm a guy. I'm a modern man, guys. I want to say that. I'm a modern man. Uh, metropolitan. I ride the subway. And um, I am a big fan of cleaning up, keeping the place clean and tidy. And that's why I've chosen the Eufy, and that's spelled E-U-F-Y, cordless handheld vacuum. Yes, I am a man who likes to tidy. And uh, this allows you to very easily, you know, vacuum up the crumbs on your desk. Say, for example, you've had a sandwich whilst you've been working at home and, you know, half of it is all over your keyboard. You can clean it up with this. It's a powerful vacuum, though, because sometimes you get these little vacuums and they're not very good. Let's be honest about it. They're not ideal. This one's actually designed for the car, but the design of it is like a wand. So it's much smaller, much more portable. You know, if you're someone with limited mobility, this could be really useful to just be able to, to vacuum up without having the hassle of having to pull out a big, heavy vacuum cleaner and use it around your home. Uh, Price-wise, this is coming in at $85. I think this is definitely something for someone you're trying to tell you need to clean up. Uh, listen, Stephen, I uh, have one of these in my car. I use it all the time. It's powered by USB, which makes it super handy. And uh, you know what? It, you just reminded me I should probably get one for each floor of my home. When the you know <laughs> dog hair, just kind of think about you yeah. know all the things my kids bring into their rooms, and I'm constantly yelling at them, "Don't aid in your rooms!" And you're gonna get it everywhere, and they're gonna need bugs. And this is one of those things that'll definitely make your life uh, a lot easier, I think. Makes cleaning fun, absolutely. I've got one more, uh, and Sean and I uh, talk about this a lot on Double Tap. In fact, I think he's a bit sick of me talking about this one, um, but it is one yes. of my favourites. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's the Table Coaster. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is such a great device. So, you know, if, are you fed up of spilling drinks in your desk, Sean, when, you know, recording a Double Tap podcast? Mm -hmm. um, well, yes. you know, this, <laughs> this is such a useful tool, right? Because what you do is you put the mug inside the table coaster, which is a little wall around the, or sitting on top of a coaster. It doesn't move because it sticks in place and it keeps your mug safe from accidental knocks. I have never knocked over a mug since I got the table coaster. I think this is just a fantastic thing for anybody, frankly. But, you know, if you, you can save money by buying this, guys, because if you buy this, you will not then knock over your drink and then completely, you know, destroy your lovely keyboard that you've just bought. Uh, and in terms on, of price, does, it's, it's like $20. It's nothing. But how does it work? I mean, I, I know it looks like a, like a cylinder almost that your mug sits in, so it gives it some height around it. Is it like one of these gyroscope-powered things that just stop it from knocking? Like, I can imagine, like, when I knock over drinks on my keyboard and my desk, it's normally like a tall water bottle or something, and I just go, forgot the, t the cap on it. Like, can this save me from that? I'd love to tell you that it's got a gyroscope in it. Actually, it's just a piece of plastic with a bit of adhesive <laughs> at the bottom. Um, but, you know, it, it does the job, right? I mean, that's, it's perfect for, for the purpose, right? I mean, it just, it's, it's exactly that. You put the cup in it. It's got a little hole there so you can slide the cup in. And it will, of course, give you enough room for the handle as well. Uh, it's also easier to find and locate because, you know, as a blind guy, and Sean does this as well, you know, you, you can't move anything around. Everything has to be in the same place all the time, ideally. And this makes that happen because it's literally stuck to the desk. I'm just no, going to glue my cup this... to my desk. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Yeah. That's another okay. way of doing it. Uh, gents, okay, you know, so yes, you can go to social media, you can see the people I don't like, but there are people that are in my life that I do like. And we, we're going to come back, we're going to take a quick break. Not only are we going to come back with our youngest correspondent ever on this show, which isn't saying much, um, but we're also going to talk about some a little bit higher priced items, okay? So do stick around. Thank you, Sean Priest, for being here. Thank, thank you, Stephen Scott. Um, Ollie Acosta Pickering joins us next from Ottawa. Stick around. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back. The latest in tech and accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Marco Flalo. Hey, everyone. 
welcome back to Access Tech Live. I'm Stephen Scott. Mark Flalo is with me. And we're back on our annual holiday gift guide episode. Sean Priest is with us this week as well. So, Mark, we've discussed some of the, let's call them lower cost items. That's the way you phrased it. Uh, for people that you don't like, although I thought that was yeah. a good list, so I'd be quite happy to get some of that stuff. Um, but let's talk about some items uh, of a bit better value, shall we say. Oh, so more expensive is what you're saying here? Yes. Okay, okay. I, I love the Beats Studio Pro headphones. These are over-the-ear headphones that come from Beats, but the coolest thing about these headphones, obviously you get them in multiple colors. You know, if there's a, an audio lover in your life that loves music, you're gonna get great quality sound with Beats headphones. The cool thing about these in particular is that they have all the smarts and even better processing than the AirPods Max. So for a fraction of the price of the AirPods Max, which are what, still like $700 Canadian, for $469, you can get these Beats and get amazing sound, uh, instant pairing with the wireless technology that's on board, the lower latency, the high quality lossless audio over wireless. Obviously, you have your choice of colors, as I said. And honestly, I'm not going to lie, I've tried the AirPods Max versus these Beats Studio Pro, and, and these sound a little bit better. But that we know, Sean, right, is this is subjective, correct? my ears literally i thought the uh the air maxes were just the ones to go for i'm really surprised by this mark aren't beats still tuned to be a little bit bassy has that gone away now they they are a little bit bassier um which is something that i don't oh. mind but don't forget your that drum on and bass. your yes. ios devices you can tweak those things you can still tweak you know the eq so you can roll off the bass if you wanted to that's what i do i tend to I love these because they're compact, they fold, they have a nice case, they sound good, um, they've got all the technology on board, and you just gotta, you gotta tweak the sound on any pair of headphones, I think, in order to fit what your listening profile might be. That's true, very true. No, they sound good. I, I'm, I'm just stunned that you'd even dare to compare them to the AirPods Max, Mark, but okay, Oh, fine, come on. Man. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I, fine, I what do you have I'm in mind, Mr. That. Scott? Well, I'll be honest. I wasn't thinking that big of a jump, but okay. If that's the if that's the kind of level we're going with, I'll uh, I'll throw this one in, uh, okay. because you know you might think that when, if I said watch to you, you might think, oh, here we go. He's going to mention the Apple Watch, but of actually, no. Yeah, well, you'd think that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but no, uh, because I'm going to mention the Bradley timepiece. This is from a company called E1, and okay. it's a really stylish, but it's a practical watch as well. It comes in a range of styles and colors. So you've got your deep black all the way up to rose gold and silver. And there's loads of other colors as well. Loads of different strap options. Uh, now, the thing that makes this stand out is it has raised hour markers that actually let you feel the time by touch. It's got a triangular marker for 12. It's got an elongated line segment for the three, the six and the nine. And it's got shorter line segments for the other markers as well. So you can feel the time on it. And two magnetized ball bearings travel around the watch face in separate recessed tracks, right? So you've got one track around the center of the watch's face on the top, and that counts as the minute. And then you've got another track around the outside edge for the hour. So to tell the time by touch, you just simply run your finger over the raised hour markers, feeling the markers where the ball bearings are found, and then you can catch up with the time. It's a, it's a really beautiful watch, actually and I think offers a really accessible way for blind people in particular to tell the time without the need of a loud talking watch where you have this thing that you press the button and it goes, bong, it's 4.13 or whatever, uh, or on an expensive smartwatch, which is, of course, not accessible to everyone either in terms of price. And it's actually quite attractive to wear out on the town as well. Oh, and did I mention that the box even comes with Braille instructions as well? Sean, oh. is this a watch you would be interested in? This is the watch that Willy Wonka made. It is just so cool. It's like a contraption. And you're right, you know, I, I, I really like the digital watches myself. I, I still go to the retro calculator watch. I think that's cool. But for other people, and we've talked about this on Double Tap recently, other people want a bit of style. I don't know, some people, they like fashion and style. And this is exactly that. It's an accessible tactile watch, which is just a bit different. Gives you that little bit of uh, zing. To your style i quite like this one Zing i gotta say mark. that i gotta say that this design just the tactile element of it and the use of the ball bearing and the magnets 
it's so incredibly brilliant. Like to come up with that concept and to bring it to life, you cannot, like if you thought of a tactile watch, there's no other way that you could do this. And the fact that they thought of this and brought this to life blows my mind because I would wear this too. I mean, to be able to just feel down and, and know exactly where everything, oh, that, that, it just sounds so absolutely cool. Have you actually had time to play with this hands on yet, Stephen? Oh, I have, yeah. I actually bought one. Oh. Uh, I, I got it in the lovely black color. I got my wife a lovely white one, and so cool. uh, she loves it as well. It, it's so nice. It's so, and the great thing is sometimes the ball bearings do come off the track a little bit. They kind of lose track, especially if you're feeling your way around. But you just shake your wrist, they go right back and snap back to the right time. So you can easily find the time. But like you say, this is something that can really benefit anybody. It's not a yeah. product that's designed for blind people. It's a product designed for everybody. It's a style. It's a style icon thing. Um, but it happens to be really accessible as well, which is fabulous. So Ray-Ban and Meta came out with the Ray-Ban Wayfarer glasses with Meta. They were announced earlier this year at Facebook's uh, or Meta's uh, developers conference. Second generation of these glasses that have Meta smarts on board. They are a, a beautiful traditional Ray-Ban Wayfarer design, no real big added bulk, uh, a downwards firing speaker that go right into your ear that even if you're blasting music or having a phone call, no one next to you is really gonna get annoyed with it. They come in both options as regular glasses, so you can actually get lenses that are prescription. Uh, they even come with glasses that a guy that actually transition to sunglasses when you walk outside. Of course, you can buy the traditional sunglasses. I bring up the Wayfarers because those are the ones that I ordered, but they have different styles as well that are available, and they start at three sixty nine. You of course can connect your smartphone to it. You can use for for private talking. Um, you can obviously use the smarts on board to be able to ask it questions like what time is it, what's on your calendar, et cetera, et cetera. They're adding the capability of streaming uh, to Instagram. I believe just early in twenty twenty four. Right now, you can take photos in beautiful, beautiful, stunning photos. They're actually quite good with the camera on board uh, as well as actual video you can actually take video of stuff that's going on around you and the streaming is going to be interesting because you'll be able to stream live to instagram and facebook I imagine you're on a go-kart or you're skiing or you're doing some kind of activity where you're moving the first person point of view is going to be really cool and, and you know what they're stylish sunglasses and glasses at the end of the day so anybody out there who might you know be looking for a new pair of silent sunglasses or glasses these are a pretty good option and, and steven and sean i could see both of you wearing these instead of those bose frames that you used to have <laughs> I dare you, they're part of my uniform, having audio sunglasses, but the addition of a camera really opens this up. And of course, I'm forever thinking, where could this lead? Because streaming and taking photos and videos, all very accessible, all very hands-free, very nice. But what about if this opened up to other assistive apps, such as Be My Eyes mm. or Ira? Then these take on a completely different form. These are very interesting. Yeah, no, I well, think that we can definitely see those features coming down the road. I think for sure. Yeah, I mean, I it's so. interesting to see that it's like Tech Global this week. Meta were there, right? And uh, you'd be interested to see now they're getting into that conversation and into that space. Who knows? This might be this might be coming down the track. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, you know, uh, we, we've discussed this off the air. We've had this conversation before. And, and sometimes you want to shop for people that are younger, in the younger generation. What are kids these days into, right? And, and we don't actually know the answer to this question because we're not in their shoes anymore. We're far older than they are. So rather than us pretending here that we know, we actually sought out, Stephen, one of the nation's foremost experts on this subject. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, he wasn't available. So oh. <laughs> instead, we reached out to our buddy, Ollie Acosta Pickering in Ottawa, and asked if he wanted to act as like an Access Tech Live correspondent. Lucky for us, he jumped at the chance to revisit with some of his friends at the CNIB in Lansdowne Park and see what they wanted for the holidays. Ollie? Hello, my name is Ollie Acosta Pickering, and I am in Ottawa at the CNIB Lansdowne Hub here to ask some of my friends and CNIB members about what they want for the holidays. Now, let's go. Okay, let's start with the first person today. Hello, what is your name? Caleb Campbell. And what do you hope to do and to get for the holidays? I hope to 
visit my grandma because she always gets me stuff I want. And speaking of stuff I want, I am hoping to get some wooden trains for the holidays so I can start um, a wooden train rail fanning series on my YouTube channel. That's really cool. What is your favorite thing about the holidays? Like I said, visiting my grandma and of course getting presents. So we have our next friend here. What is your name? Hi, I'm Connor Norris. Where are you hoping to go for the holidays? After Christmas, I am going to be at a cottage with my family. Nice. And what do you want to get for the holidays? Mm -hmm. Well, I know one of my cousins named Caroline, that's on my mom's side. She has, like I said, involving an ambulance, so I like that. And obviously, they need to sled with my cousins. I need a sled, so I'd like that. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the holidays? Do you like them? Yes, I really do like the holidays. It makes me very happy because I get to see my family and just relax and enjoy myself. Nice. Thank you for your time, Connor. What is your name? My name is Sophia. And where are you hoping to go for the holidays? Um, I'm actually hoping just to stay home because my all my family is here um, and I'm really looking forward to ha like spending time with them during the holidays. Nice. And what are you hoping to get for the holidays, like presents? Mm. Okay, so to be honest, I really want cash because I'm I'm kind of broke. Um, and I also want um, gift cards to like Sephora and Strawberry Struggler and maybe Indigo and Starbucks. And also, I'm hoping to get some like new makeup products to try. How do the holidays make you feel? The holidays make me feel really happy and excited because, well, um, because I like spending time with my family and like decorating and I also like getting presents. But to be fair, who doesn't like getting presents? Yeah, I know I do. <laughs> it has been a wonderful time here at the Lansdowne CNIB Hub in Ottawa. I hope you all have a happy holidays. My hope for the holidays is that I can play as much hockey as I want with my friends in the outdoor rinks. Also, I'm hoping to have a nice Christmas with my family and dog and cat. This is Oliver Acosta Pickering reporting live. Back to you, Stephen and Mark at the studio. Hey, thank you, Ollie, and uh, we hope you have a wonderful holiday time too. Uh, I've got to say, not much mention of tech there, Mark. I, I, I think the best response in there had to be cash. cash. I cash. want cold, <laughs> hard cash. That person was echoing my sentiments there. Listen, Stephen, it's not all about tech sometimes. Sometimes you got to go a little bit analog. I'm sure there was a gift yeah. idea there or two that said, that Sean would enjoy. I mean, who wouldn't love some makeup, Sean, right? I mean, you can get some shine off that forehead there. I, actually, Sean, before we even, before we take a break, I'm going to ask you, is there is there anything on the list that you've actually like written down and said, I need to get that for somebody? Like, are we, are we accomplishing our mission here? Oh, of course you are. Uh, no, honestly, the, the air tags are always a great gift because they are yeah. incredibly useful. Um, it doesn't matter if you're visually impaired or not. People are always losing things. And these things you can attach to anything, basically, you know, key rings or remote controls or even just throw them into a bag. They are really useful. It's hard. Can Listen, I... you got to find things from all these price points, right, Stephen, and figure out yeah. what could possibly match for everybody. There is an idea for everybody out there. I promise there's a tech idea for people out there. Yeah, I, I just, just want to say, I think what we should probably do is marry your ideas together, guys, because I'm thinking here, just from what you're both saying, I think we should put some of these air tags into the pockets of all the friends that Mark is about to lose as a result of this show. <laughs> I don't and want to find them again. see where they all go. I don't yes, want to find he wants them again. Them <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, so, you know, if money wasn't an object, what would you want for the holidays? Uh, we're going to be, you know, obviously fielding the answers. But I got to say that, you know, Stuart wrote in and said that he wants a private jet. Okay, I think that's pushing it just a little bit, Stuart. I don't know if, but I, I did, I didn't, you know, the whole money isn't an object thing. Rosie from the Jetsons, that was my favorite, I think. So thank you to Wendy for oh, that one, because 
But and you can still get involved if you want to let us know. There's still some time here, okay? You can hop onto the YouTube chat if you want to. You can reach out on social media. It is at Access Tech Live, of course. The email address feedback at accesstechlive.com. As well, if money was an object, what would you want for the holidays? We've got more gift ideas, guys. Plus, we're going to do some rapid fire stuff because we have a list that's so long that we're not going to be able to get to it in this one hour. So let's take a quick break here. Thank you, Sean, for being here. Thank you, Stephen. We'll be back in a moment here on Access Tech Live. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back. The latest in tech and accessibility. This is Access Tech Live with Stephen Scott and Marco Flalo. Welcome back to the show. Okay, so we've tackled some of the lower cost items, uh, some more mid-range items as well. Now it's time for the people you love. Oh, yes. Oh, so that's like uh, you, Mark Stephen, like stuff yeah. you by me. This is <laughs> well, let's, let's get right into it. So, okay, then, since you love me so much, what are you going to buy me this year? I'm going to buy you a beautiful, I feel like Vanna White, a TCL television. Okay, let's talk about TCL TVs for a second. Okay. I know a TV seems like a little bit of an outrageous larger gift for somebody, but think about this for a second, okay? You have uh, cousins or nephews who are students who are in dorms, someone moving into a new home or apartment, for example. A TV is a must-have in your home. Like, you got to have that there. It's your center of your, you know, the center of everything. People come over to watch the big game. You need a TV. TCL is a brand that, honestly, I was introduced to about four or five years ago. They're not like, you know, they're not like this high-end Sony, Panasonic, expensive brand, but they make incredible 4K televisions that have uh, incredible media player operating systems built in. So they make Roku versions, they make Google versions, which means that when you turn it on, you're right there into that ecosystem. So if you want to install apps like Netflix, if you want to, install, you know, Prime, et cetera, et cetera, everything is right there. But here's the interesting part. You know, we talk about, you know, people we love. You can get these televisions and these 4K great quality televisions starting at $158. And I'm not saying $158 is going to be a 22 inch screen, Stephen. I'm talking about getting a nice 4k, I don't know, 42 inch TV for $158 with Roku oh. built in. That is value, my friend. And the person on the receiving end of that is going to be like, wow, you spent a lot of money and you deceived them. Right, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> you really hate people, Mark. This is great. TVs have become so affordable right now, right? The quality has gone up and the price has gone down. TV is a great call. Yeah, Listen, I like the sound of this. It's, it's where I go. And I love the fact, and I've got to say this as well, because, of course, one of the joys of TVs uh, these days is you can buy that lower cost. And, you know, for some people, they may not be too fussed about the the way that you navigate the TV because they may be hooking up a cable box, maybe hooking up an Apple TV or a Fire TV stick or whatever. So, you know, the TV quality is important, but it is that price point that is so appealing and you're getting the smarts built in. That's that's really cool. John, what's on your list? Oh, I want to talk about the Hable One. This is something that's really come up uh, quite high in the Double Tap gift guide. Everyone loves this. So this is a very small, very portable Braille controller for your iPhone or Android phone. Um, now, you don't have to be a Braille expert to use this. I use it all the time, and I barely use Braille normally, but it's just so good for entering text. I know a little bit of grade one. Entering text is much faster than the on-screen keyboard, but more than that, you can use this to interact, navigate, and control virtually every aspect of your smartphone. Keep it in your pocket, simply have the Hable One controller in your hand, and you can pretty much do anything. It really is amazing. I don't know how they did it, but they made it just so usable and so easy to pick up and learn. There's a lot of tutorials on their website, and $199, a bit of a considered purchase, but believe me, it's just great. It is great, and I think what's so cool about this device is the fact that, like you say, you're not that into Braille, yet you bought one. And this is something I'm hearing from a lot of people who've got this, because ultimately, it's the ability to control the smartphone with it that's really appealing to people. So yeah, you can have this, you can use it to navigate your device by some very simple commands, and then at the same time, you can begin the process of learning Braille. So you're kind of learning Braille by proxy. That's what I love about this, it's so cool. I am Hable, by the way, yes. .com, the website, if you want to check that out. Yeah. Yes, that's Hable like table, but with an H. It's very, <laughs> very good, check it out. Stephen, you've got a computer on the list. Is that like something I'm getting? 
Uh, you never know, right? I mean, it's highly unlikely, obviously, but you know, this is actually something I got myself this year. So I've been in the market for a new computer and I was thinking a new laptop computer and I thought we, we should really add one into this guide here because everyone's always interested in what new computer they should get. And I, th I looked at the new MacBook Pros and I thought, you know, because everyone knows I'm an Apple guy, so I thought, hey, new MacBook Pro, space black, really nice, really sexy. Um, do I need it though? That's the challenge. <laughs> do I really need it? And the answer I don't think is yes. So I decided to opt instead for the 15 inch MacBook Air with the M2 processor. I say this in the week that there are rumors of an M3 MacBook Air going to launch in February, but we'll just park that for a second. Um, because, you know, I think this is possibly my favorite laptop of all the range of MacBooks that are out there at the moment. Now, like I say, Space Black is nice and the latest M3 processors all sound lovely as well and they're really fast, but you've got to ask yourself what you need. And of course, think about the cost as well. These are really expensive pieces of kit. The question I asked myself this year is, do I really need all that? And the answer is no. So I got this 15 inch MacBook Pro M2 processor Midnight blue. Yes, it is covered in fingerprints, guys, but they're my fingerprints, and that's the important thing. Um, now, it is fast. Uh, the screen is big and bright if you needed that. And for me, and this is the weirdest thing about this, the speakers, in comparison to the 13-inch MacBook Air, are so much better, so much big, bigger, so much louder. Uh, a major improvement on that 13-inch version. Pricing there starts at 1749 uh, it's still a considered purchase, of course, but I think it is that perfect balance between spending a ridiculous amount of money on a pro MacBook that you may never even need the power of and the really cheaper and much cheaper MacBook Air M1 that is the entry level or, of course, the Mac Mini if you're looking for a desktop as well in the Apple range. So it's a good piece of kit to buy and it's fairly, fairly budget conscious. I, I got to say, I'm on the fence here because, you know, I even had this, 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 this not argument. I, I asked my wife, I said, is it unreasonable to want a new MacBook because it's available in a new color? And I'm not going to lie, guys. No one has told me no. no <laughs> Everybody can't, can't no. said, no, you know, that's totally reasonable. I think you should go get a new computer for $2,000 because there's a new color available. <laughs> I, I think I'm waiting for someone to tell me not to do it, but it hasn't happened yet. No, and you're not going to get me telling you that, I'll tell you. I know, Sean, well, I know one person who will. Sean Priest will definitely say that because he's never buying one of these. Uh, yes, that's very, very true. Um, a great piece of kit, but it's one of those if price was no object for me. Yes, absolutely. Okay, you see, there you go. And that brings up the perfect, you know, the question of the day. There's a couple other answers I wanted to throw in there. Someone wrote in, Marc Francois wrote a, a holodeck. He wants a holodeck for the holidays. And the other one, a that's particle cool. accelerator. I like those uh, those two options as well. Oh, wow, okay, you know what? Uh, okay, we're we're, we're running out of time here. Okay, we're running out of time. I want to do some rapid fire because there's things on the list that we know we wanted to get in that we didn't know how we're going to have time for all of it. Mm. So okay. let's try this rapid fire. We'll go back and forth and give kind of like our, our top ten or so here in, in no particular order, right, Stephen? Okay, let's go. Uh, so first up, um, uh, let me let me throw in how about OtterBox phone cases? I say this because it's OtterBox phone cases I use. And if you're getting a new smartphone this year, you want to make sure it's protected properly with a good and hard-wearing phone case. So they start roughly around $20. They go all the way up to $100, depending on what kind of style you go for, that are available for a wide range of smartphones, both Android and Apple. Okay, so I'm going to talk about Lutron. Lutron makes uh, uh, the Cassetta Wireless Smart Lighting Kit. Okay, this is a great way if you're on the fence and you want to get in to the smart home ecosystem where you know somebody who does. For $69, you get yourself a dimmer switch. You get a remote so you can control that switch from somewhere else. And you get the hub. So it means that you're starting off in the smart home ecosystem in the right way. And you can then add on switches, add on sensors, and add on tons of stuff down the road. And you are well on your way to building the smart home of your dreams. Sean, what about you? Very cool. I'm going with the Firemax 11 tablet. Amazon tablets are great, very affordable and very powerful, but this one in particular, because it features uh, an accessibility feature called eye gaze. For anyone who has problems using a touch screen, you can use eye tracking on this one. Very, very nice. Okay, I'm gonna mention the Beats Fit Pro Wireless. I mean, if you want the best sound for the best bang for your buck, this is a, a great opportunity to get these headphones. Um, again, starting at a price of you know under $400, definitely go out and get them. Steven? 
OK, uh, how about this one uh, from OpenCom, or from the company Shocks, I should say, OpenCom headset. Uh, this is a bone conduction headset, meaning the sound isn't going directly into your ear, but actually travelling via your cheekbone into your, into your brain. It's incredible. Uh, and it means you can still hear the kids while they're running about doing who knows what, uh, and while you are keeping on top of that Teams meeting as well. Uh, the price is $209, $210, wherever you get them. OK. Kensington, this is a brand that I've started to really fall in love with. They're big into ergonomics, but they make a really cool compact keyboard called the Kensington Multi-Device Dual Wireless Compact Keyboard. If you travel and you want to bring a keyboard that's bigger than the one built into your laptop, this is a great option. It runs on traditional AA batteries. It's compatible with multiple devices. So you can use it for your laptop. You can use it for a desktop, iOS devices, Android, PC, Mac, no matter what you want, for only $39.99. Wow. Bargain. And this one is a gift for me. I would buy myself. It is, and I have done, the MX Keys keyboard from Logitech. I absolutely love this. It's a solid, full-size keyboard. All the keys where you would expect them, which is not always standard these days. Uh, it's uh, coming in at around $149, but well worth the money. It's amazing. Yeah, Stephen and I both have those, and we love those keyboards. Uh, I've got oh, another yeah, one from Kensington. This is another headset. Uh, this is a great office-type headset, like I'd say communication headset. It's the H3000 Bluetooth over-ear headset from Kensington. Um, listen, great sound, great price, just $139.99. You know, anybody working from home who needs to communicate, whether it's on FaceTime, on Teams, on Zoom, this is a perfect, perfect headset for what you need. Uh, now, you mentioned keyboards, and uh, this is one that I think is really worth having. Uh, if you struggle to find those keys on the keyboard, maybe you're not a touch typist and you struggle to move around the keyboard, maybe you're low vision, you struggle to see the lettering on the keys, how about the Surface Adaptive Kit? Uh, this lets you identify critical keys through touch, as well as matching those ports and cables as well. So you can actually line up a USB port or a VGA port. VGA, goodness me, that's aging me. HDMI, let's go there. Uh, <laughs> it's roughly about $25 is uh, the price of that. Sean, uh, what, about, uh, what about fun at home? Oh, I'm against it. But if you're adamant to have fun at home, they can't beat Lego. I used to use Lego as a kid, but now there's a new twist with the Lego Braille bricks. These are fantastic. All the fun of Lego with the addition of some Braille labels. So visually impaired people can get involved as well. Absolutely fantastic. Not just for kids, I'm going to say it. I want these. Yeah. For big kids too, I Sean. Agree. For big kids too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Priest, thank you so much for taking the time to join us and thank you for your lovely gift ideas. Of course, people can find you on the Sean of the Shed, an AMI original podcast over on YouTube and of course, all your podcast providers. And of course, every single day alongside Stephen Scott on the Double Tap Daily Podcast. Thank you for being here. When we come back from a quick break, the answer to the question of the day. Stick around. We want to hear from you. Follow us on social media and get involved at Access Tech Live. We'll be right back.